What's going on family? Robert here. So we're in this story looking at how Dina got defiled by Shechem. And in this story, it says that Shechem loved Dina so much that she that he went to Jacob and the sons asking for her hand in marriage. And here is the response after his desperate plea to marry Dina. He says in Genesis 34 verse 13 these words. But Jacob's sons answered Shechem and his father Hamor deceitfully because he had defiled their sister Dina. We cannot do this thing, they said to them. Giving our sister to an uncircumcised man is a disgrace to us. We will agree with you only on this condition. If all your males are circumcised as we are, then we will give you our daughters, take your daughters for ourselves, live with you, and become one people. But if you will not listen to us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and go. These words seemed good to Hamor and his son Shechem. The young man did not delay doing this because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. Now, he was the most important in all his father's family. So Hamor and his son Shechem went to the gate of their city and spoke to the men of their city. These men are peaceful towards us, they said. Let them live in our land and move about in it, for indeed the region is large enough for them. Let's take their daughters as our wives and give our daughters to them. But the men will agree to live with us and be one people, only this condition. If all our men are circumcised as they are, won't their livestock, their possessions, and all their animals become ours? Only let's agree with them, and they will live with us. So here in the text, the sons of Jacob propose something to Shechem, and that was that all the men of the city would be circumcised. And it says that they did that deceitfully. The sons of Jacob had ulterior motives. But it seemed like a good plan because Shechem loved Dina so much that he took it, that plan, and he went to the men at the city gate where all the business of the city occurred and he expressed to them to do this thing because Jacob and his family were a large family. They had possessions, they had animals, they had slaves, and if they were incorporated into Shechem, Shechem could have all these possessions as well. And so to convince the men at the city, they said all these things also showing their ulterior motives in the deal. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us today that ulterior motives never produce any Good. Let me say that one more time in case you missed it. If, if you are dealing in a place with someone or you yourself have ulterior motives, they do not produce good. Jacob and his sons weren't seeking to get them circumcised, but they were seeking to in incapacitate the men of the city to do some bad things to them. And the men of Shechem didn't care so much about them incorporating Jacob and his family. They just wanted their possessions. And all of that brought the downfall of both of the people, the people of Shechem and also the people of Jacob's family, specifically Simeon and Levi. Brothers and sisters, again, let me encourage you that ulterior motives do not produce. So let's not be like the people in this story. But let's be people with a pure heart and a pure mind. Paul says that this is the will of God for you, your sanctification, to be more like Christ and less like the people in this story. So with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we see in this story a wrong. And then we see that wrong being covered up by ulterior motives, both by Jacob and his sons, but also by the men of Shechem. Help us to see this as an example for us not to follow and to follow the example of Christ in holiness, in sanctification, and in goodness. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So thank you for studying with me. Come back as we continue to look at this story of Dina's defiling. God bless.